किए गए थे शायद कि तुम कटवे के लिए क्या करो तो रोज़ा रखना या नमाज पढ़ना या हज करना या जक़ात अदा करना असल में ये खुद बजात खुद कोई मकसद नहीं है मकसद जो है वो अल्लाह का खौफ है अल्लाह का तकवा है इनके ज़रिए और इसमें ये फरमाया गया कि शायद तुम तस्वीर की रविश रविश इख्तियार करो तो अल्लाह ताला से दुआ है ये महीना ख़त्म हो रहा है रमज़ान का और खुश नसीब है अल्लाह ताला बड़ा रहीम और करीम है कि वो हमेशा हमें हमारी ज़िंदगी में जो है कई रमज़ान आ चुके हैं और रमज़ान के बारे में अल्लाह के रसूल सल वसम की अदीस है कि जो तीन बातों पर आपने आमीन कहा उसमें से एक ये थी कि जिसने रमज़ान पाया और उसने अपनी मफ़रत नहीं करवाई तो वो शक तबाह बर्बाद हो और ये जो ये जो बदवा की थी ये जबरील आसमाम ने की और उस पर आमीन जो कहा था वो अल्लाह के रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ने कहा था यानी दोनों एक जो है वो फरिश्तों के सरदार हैं और दूसरे जो है वो अम्बियाओं के सरदार हैं अल्लाह के रसूल सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम तो अल्लाह ताला से दुआ है कि अल्लाह ताला हमें जो है वो इस रमज़ान को इस तरीके से गुजारें कि अल्लाह ताली जो है हमारी मफ़रत फरमा दें तो आज हमारे साम साथ हमारे इस्कॉलर अब्दुलवाइस साहब यहाँ तशरीफ़ रखते हैं तो इनसे दरख्वास्त है कि ये पहले थोड़ा सा इंग्लिश में इन शादियों के लिए करेंगे फिर हमारे लिए भी तो इन शाहिए سلام حتى مطلع الفجر وعن ابي هريره رضي الله عنه ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام ليله القدر ايمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه او كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد respected brothers <coughs> respected brothers and sisters inshallah in this our short talk i will try to address two points number one about laylatul qadr and secondly about rights of quran upon us or our duties towards quran in a believer and we are when we are to look in quran about laylatul qadr in this surah the way i have recited or the other parts of the quran the quran is discussing talking about this night actually the importance of this night is not due to that it is a laylatul qadr it is because quran was revealed in this night so if we have to think and ponder that is leading us towards something else which means that quran is more important than this very night and even if we are to look in surah al baqarah bismillahir rahmanir rahim shahr ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al quran hudan lin nas wa bayyinat min al huda wal furqan so importance of ramadan is being given why because quran was revealed in this month so from man the great blessings and favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon humanity and especially upon the believers is what is the gift of quran ever great gift we muslims got with us number 2 We see another uh, surah Allah subhanahu wa taala saying what? فَبِذَالِكَ فَالْيَفْرَحُ هُوَ خَيْرُ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ. A believers are supposed to celebrate what? This night, and they should celebrate what? The revelation of the Quran and the presence of Quran among themselves. هُوَ خَيْرُ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ. 
and the presence of Quran among you is far better and way beneficial than what you are accumulating from among uh, the worldly uh, things and goals and achievements. The most high achievement is what? If you are to know uh, about the status of the Quran. What a great gift. Even the night in which the Quran was revealed is, has become the most honored night. Why? Because Quran was uh, revealed. And this is where what we see Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his say and Abi Zirara radiyallahu anhu and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qaal qad jaakum shahr ramadhan shahrun mubarakun iftaradullahu alayhi iftaradullahu alaykum siyamahu tuftahu fihi abwaabu aljannati wa tughlaqu fihi abwaabu nari wa tughallu fihi shayateenu fihi laylatun khayrun min alf shahrin man hurimaha faqad hurima alkhayra kulla but oh people uh, month of Ramadan has approached you wa huwa shahrun mubarakun and Ramadan is a blessed month Ramadan is all about the blessings and favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so don't look at Ramadan as is a burden for you or a hindrance for your day-to-day -day routine and matters and business and other activities of your life. Rather, you should be looking at it what? As absolute mercy and as absolute gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iftaradullahu alaykum siyamahu. Allah has made obligatory the fasting of uh, this month upon you and fast, fasting of Ramadan upon you. This is the very month during which the gates of the heaven are being opened and the, uh, according to the other hadith, the paradise is being decorated and being prepared for the believers. And the gates of the hellfire are being closed. Look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much advantage is he giving us? Just what? To, to motivate you and me to move on, to come forward, to do something extra in this month of Ramadan to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, well, to know about this much importance of the month of Ramadan, so what we were supposed to do? We supposed to be thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his ever great favor upon us. He, it, it, it seems when you read about the hadith about the reward of the fasting and the month of Ramadan and the presence of the Malaika and all great rewards and the gates of uh, the heaven are being opened and the gates of the hellfire are being closed. What does it mean all? We are being facilitated. We are being encouraged to thank Allah subhanahu. And if someone has all these uh, facilities available at his doorstep and still if he or she has no time to take out, to, dev to devote it for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for fasting, for salat al taraweeh for other activities, then indeed uh, it is true what brother mentioned, the hadith, that he is uh, indeed a deprived one. He is indeed a deprived one if all those facilities are over there and he just cannot take advantage of these uh, facilities and these surroundings. And what else? The Tughallu fi shayateen, a shayateen, and the sentence is being chained. And what else? Fi laylatun khayrun min alf shahrin, and during this month there is a night which is better than a thousand months. Man hurimaha faqad hurima al khayra kulla and whomever was deprived of getting benefit from this night is really a deprived one and is really uh, not a lucky person who was not enough able to attend this night who was not enough able to manage his time to work hours and business transactions to spend time at the masjid, to spend time at the center, to spend time with Quran, with Salat al Taraweeh, with Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with all those devotional work and activities. So, 
so all those things are there and look at this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just is looking for uh, us just to come forward and he is willing and more than willing to forgive us to pardon us to bless us to honor us so are we willing are we understanding what's going on how much steps are we taking you see all of us we are busy with our day-to-day -day life but la samah Allah God forbid if any incident happens in a family, someone got sick, we are hospitalized. So now we have to change our schedule, isn't it? All of us, we switch the things back and forth and all the meetings, we cancel them or we defer them and, and appointments and all those sort of things we fix. So can't we do for the Ramadan, at, at least for these uh, odd nights of Ramadan, 21st and 3rd and uh, 5th and 7th and 9th, it is something doable, but if you understand the importance of it, if we are really looking for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to our, 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 our forgive, uh, sins to be forgiven, so if we have that purpose, sole purpose in, in front of our eyes, then we can switch the things back and forth and make it a top priority at least the last 10 days of Ramadan. And let me share with you another hadith and then I may move to the next point. Where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, قَالَ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ إِنَّهَا لَيْلَةُ سَابِعَةٍ أَوْ تَاسِعَةٍ وَعِشْرِينَ وَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تِلْكَ اللَّيْلَةُ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَكْثَرُ مِنْ عَدَدِ الْحَصَاءِ عَلَى الْعَرْضِ Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that the night of Al-Qadr is falling either on 27th or on 29th according to this hadith and this narration. And the number of the malaika and the angels who come to the earth, who walk on the sur surface of the earth, is more than the number of the pebbles you may see around you. So what this huge number of malaika and angels is doing when they come on, earth, on the earth? What, what sort of sign is this one? It's a sign of blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The he, the his, his angels are going door to door to honor the people, to present them the presents from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the pardon and, and forgiveness and blessings and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So are we willing to open our doors to welcome the malaika? Are we ready to be awake so when malaika are coming, knocking our door, they, they're coming at our door so we are not sleeping. We are not indulging in something which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they may come to the door and then they, they go back. It's now, it's you and me. We should be looking at ourselves. So what are we been doing? Because in according to another hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that these malaika, they enter each and every home of a believer except three people. Number one, the one who uh, displeases his parents and he is disobedient of his parents. Number two, the house where there is a dog or a picture. Picture of something which is alive, we know which is forbidden. That uh, or dog out of necessity. If there is necessity, there is an exceptional case for the purpose of security or something like that. But other than that, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and his Prophet sallallahu told us that, that is not permissible. So, number two, they will not enter this house. Number three, وَمُدْمِنُ الْخَمْرِ The one who excessively drinks. Because drinking is, is, is forbidden Islamic teaching. So someone is indulging in that sort of things for sure. He is not uh, be ready to welcome the malaika. So this way malaika are not going to enter these three houses. So are we willing to welcome malaika? Now, I mean, you don't, you and me don't have to look for malaika. They are coming to our houses. So can't we just make a little effort? So when they come and visit our house, so our house is ready to welcome them. And just to receive the blessings. Just imagine if you and me are about to receive an appointment letter from a company who is offering us good salary and package and all of that. Oh, how much you will me will be waiting? Well, when this uh, postman is coming, or uh, if the postman's car is coming, or his bicycle is coming, you and me are looking around from the windows. Oh, well, if he is coming around, uh, if he is going to knock my door. What about Malaika? 
ملائکۃ اللہ دے ار کمنگ ناکنگ ار ڈورز سو ار وی ریڈی ٹو ویلکم دیم ار وی ریڈی ٹو ریسیو دیم ار ڈوئنگ سم تھنگ سو دیٹ وی ریزرو دی پریزنس او ایٹ دس نائٹ سو می اللہ سبحانہ تعالی بلس اس وت توفیق ان ایبلٹی ٹو ورک آؤٹ فار دس نائٹ اینڈ ٹو ریسیو دیٹ دوز گریٹ گفٹس اپان دس نائٹ And the second point of ours uh, is about, as I said, is about the Qur'an. So because Ramadan is related to Qur'an, and the importance and the status of Ramadan is due to what? Shahr Ramadan ladhi unzila feehi al-Qur'an. Because of the Qur'an. Because Qur'an is ever great gift Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, upon us. So this is where we need to learn, we need to know, well, and what are our duties towards Qur'an? What are the rights of Qur'an upon us? Number one, to recite and to learn the recitation of the Qur'an properly. To learn the recitation of Qur'an properly. I know many people, and all of you know more than me, When he came to Japan, many people, even the students are coming now. The first of all, they, when they come to the Japan, and if they have to uh, attend the university over here, they go to the language department, the language institutes, to learn the language. But we never bothered ourselves well to go and attend an institute to improve our recitation of the Quran. How many are among us? us? Well, it's, it is an obligation, just like Salat, just like fasting. To, to as Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ The true believers, they recite the Quran as they are supposed to be reciting. When it comes to our worldly things and benefits, we make no compromise. Well, this is my right. Why I should compromise? So when it comes to the Qur'an, we, we just don't care. No. It is an obligation, so we should learn a proper recitation of the Qur'an. Well, if you have learned, maybe Brother Sayyid may say, well, I have learned 50 years back or less or more. It's fine. At least you can try. So if you try, Allah is going to reward you, even if you could not improve much. It doesn't matter. But Amazingly, I, uh, when I came last time in Oska Mosque, I, I, I saw one brother, Japanese new Muslim. He is 50, for sure, he is 60 plus. And he was, uh, I was uh, teaching over there one uh, uh, class of towards understanding Quran. And he, this gentleman was attending that class very regularly, every time he was there. And I saw him three, four times. He was sitting with Imam and learning the recitation of the Quran. Brothers, if this guy, 60 plus, can learn, can try, can make effort. So what about the young people? Can't we make effort? Uh, sure, but if we are to know the importance of it. So number one, Attilawa. Number two, understanding the meaning and the message of Quran. And uh, if you are to study the Quran, you will come to know that from among the fundamentals duties of a prophet of Allah is what? يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ Yet he recites Quran upon his followers. So it's not something simple. Don't take it easy. And the second job of the prophet is what? يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ He teaches them the book, the meaning of the book, the message of the book. And then he demonstrated practically in front of them. And he did it, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's your and my duty to take out a time from, our, from among our busy schedule. When we go to a center, a mosque, or if you're living far away, still you don't have any excuse. You can buy a translation of your own language and you're convenient. And then start reading. And wherever you get stuck, you may call someone who has more knowledge about Quran. Well, I, I got stuck at this point. Uh, how would you explain and help me? 
And I have a little obser uh, observation about this. Wallahi, if you are to study the just translation of the Quran, I'm not talking you to yeah. go and uh, spend five, uh, five years or ten years or eight years in Islamic school and institute and make a degree. No. Just read translation of Quran and inshallah you will understand the fundamentals of deen more than 70% of deen which you, which you need in your day-to-day -day life. You will understand it just through reading. Meaning of course.